Hey everyone, I'm Tatiana, and today I'm going to be sharing with you five success lessons that I learned from playing Super Mario Bros. So, um, to pre-frame this video, you know, I never played video games growing up. It wasn't really my thing. My brother loved playing games, uh, not so much for me. So I'm picking this up now as an adult, just as like something to do for fun, uh, you know, when I want to be inside and just entertain myself. And it is extremely entertaining, mostly because of how horrible I am at playing this game that the the... The times that I die, it's just it's just painful, but it's it's fun, and I am getting better. But in playing this game, I've actually learned some very valuable success lessons, and I'd like to pass those on for you today. So let's get into it with success principle number one, which is quick decision making. So in Super Mario Bros, there are some levels where you have to be quick. If you are not running fast enough and you fall behind, the screen will be pushing like this and then you can die. So you have to make quick decisions, you have to keep up the pace, you have to decide, do I jump here, do I pause here, do I shoot this thing, do I do a flip? Like you have to make quick decisions in order to survive and successfully complete the level. And the same applies for life. If you want to achieve success in life, studies show that successful people, they make decisions quickly because they're sure about what they want, they know what they want, they know the objective, so making the decision is easy. And they change their minds slowly. Um, versus, on the contrary, unsuccessful people have been proven to hesitate. They make decisions very slowly because they're not sure what they want. They don't have that clarity. And then they make, they change their mind very quickly. And they change their mind and they go back and forth because they're not sure if the decision was the right decision. So it's, you know, to take away, what you take away from this is that it's really valuable if you want to be successful to learn how to be decisive. And you become decisive by getting clear about what it is that you want. What is the objective? What is the what are you trying to achieve through doing this? You know, and you can practice in everyday life. I used to be that girl who would go to the restaurant, and I would get the menu, and I'd spend 15 minutes trying to decide what I wanted to order. Now, when I go to the restaurant, I do my best to be decisive. I go na 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 na. Okay, I'm gonna have that and take my money away so I don't have to look at all the other options and be indecisive. No, I decided on that, that's what I'm gonna have. You know, there are so many decisions we need to make in life. How do you expect me to make life decisions if I can't even pick what I'm gonna order for food? So you can practice being more decisive in life uh, just with everyday things like that. And when you make a decision, stick to it. Number two, you will likely fail before you succeed. So in Mario, when I'm playing a new level and never played it before, it's totally new environment. So I can't fully anticipate what's to come. I don't know if there's gonna be a giant praying mantis that's gonna come after me or one of those turtles on the cloud that's gonna zap me or, or, or something fireball gonna shoot at me. I don't know what's coming because I've never played that level before. Um, and so I'm more likely to fail the first time. I'm probably gonna die in that level before I am able to complete it coming from a novice over here. I'm not a professional player. And so it's okay, I, I realize that. But the, the key to success is that I don't just fail and then never try again. I might fail that level and then I try again knowing that now I can anticipate what's to come. I've played that game before, I understand the environment, I have some experience. And so my likelihood of success is going to be greater because of that. And so I play that level again, and maybe I succeed, maybe not. But the more times as I play, the higher the likelihood of success because of my experience. And the same applies for life. If you have a big goal for yourself, um, you have to realize that it's possible, it's likely that you will fail countless times before you're able to succeed. Failure precedes success, and it's not a bad thing. You can't be afraid to fail. Um, you learn from those failures. And it's like, you know, if you have a kid and your kid wants to learn how to ride a bike, what's the first thing that you do as a parent? Well, you go, you buy them a helmet. You probably want to buy some wrist guards, some knee pads, some elbow pads. Why? because you are anticipating that they're probably gonna fall. 
They're probably going to fail. They're probably not going to get it right the first time. You're not expecting them to just like instantly know how to ride a bike. They've never done the motions before. They don't understand that you need momentum. They have to learn that. And the only way that they can learn that is through experience. It's through falling, falling and getting up again, right? So, and the only reason that they would fail at riding a bike is if they wouldn't get up and try again. If they say, you know what, I don't want to fall anymore. I'm done. I'm never riding a bike again. Then they're never going to learn how to ride a bike. So you have to anticipate failure and accept that it's a part of the journey. Um, Michael Jordan has a great quote that I want to read to you. I love it. I've missed more than 9,000 shots in my career. I've lost almost 300 games. 26 times I've been trusted to take the game-winning shot and missed. I've failed over and over again in my life, and that is why I succeed. So really any successful person if you go and you research them you will see that the reason they're successful is because they learned from their experience the only true failure is when you are unwilling to learn from the experience right it's a choice you could fail at something and you can choose to be sour and groan and moan about it and fail to see this that this experience actually enriched you that this experience gave you some lessons that you can take away and apply the next time you go ahead and do that um, so it's a choice you have to be willing to learn from those mistakes number three you only grow through challenges so in Super Mario Bros, if I play the same level over and over and over again, or if I'm in the same world, and I think all the worlds are a little bit, are different levels of challenge, but if I'm in the same world, playing the same level over and over again, do I get better? No. I only get better when I up level, when I go to the next level and I'm challenged by something new. The next level I have to use more, to have to tap in uh, more into my brain, my creativity, try and figure out where is the star hiding, right? So it's only when you're challenged that you grow. And the same applies to life. You know, if you want to build muscle, what do you do? You go to the gym and you lift weights. Now, if I'm to lift the same weights every single time I go to the gym, do I build muscle? Do I grow? No, I maintain what I have because if you don't use it, you lose it, but it's not going to grow. It only grows when I lift a heavier weight and challenge myself. And in life, we fear challenges. We fear problems. We want to like avoid them like the plague, especially in business. When it comes to success, we are, we're scared of the challenges. And the way I see it is like face them. These challenges are a gift. You can reframe the challenge, the problem. Even the word challenge I use in lieu of the word problem. I, I've changed it because challenge is like, for me, challenge is I, I want to face it. I want to overcome it. I know I can overcome it. Problem just has a different feel, a different vibe to it. You know, it's not as exciting. So I've traded, you might notice in my other videos, my vocabulary, I don't use the word problem. I use challenge, but it's the same thing. So. You know, when, when life hands you challenges, you can frame it as, you know, this is a gift. You know, it's not something that I wished for, but you know what, it's here right now. Let me make the most of it. Let me learn from this. Let me grow, let me grow, push past it. And I get to become more. And the more I grow, the more I will earn, the more successful I'll be, the more I'll be able to help others and contribute to others, even through the experience, right? Sometimes your worst day in your life can become your best day. If you're willing to take that challenge and see how can you use it? How can this challenge become a gift in your life? How can you serve other, others through this? Sometimes you can't help others uh, unless you've had the experience yourself and you're able to relate to them on a different level. And so I think that's really important when it comes to creating success in your life is just realizing that, yes, there, the challenges will come. You know, that's why so few people are successful is because when you climb this ladder of success, you know, there are challenges and oftentimes we get bogged down by the challenges and we become fearful. And the reason we don't have what we want in our life is because we're fearful. But you just have to keep moving forward and face those challenges and you will ultimately grow. And growth equals meaning. You know, when you grow in your life, you feel like you have purpose, you have meaning, you're becoming more. Anything that's not growing is dying. If you look at the natural world and humans, anything that's not growing in nature is dying. There's no, there's no middle ground. There's no plateau. It's, it's growing or dying. Number four, determination makes up for lack of skill. 
So sometimes we think that, oh, we need certain skills in order to achieve this, but as long as you're determined, you will develop what is necessary for you to achieve your goals. In Super Mario, I started off as just like a horrible player, but with practice, consistent practice, I am happy to say that I've improved. And no doubt, I mean, practice makes perfect. If you're doing something day after day after day, how can you not get better? And so that is a, a very positive message because no matter how far away you are from achieving your goal, no, how, no matter how out of reach it may feel, as long as you're determined, you're willing to put in the work, you're consistent, you're persistent, then with time you will improve you will continue to improve. And it's only a matter of time before you achieve that goal. So when there is a will, there is a way. Always remember that. Now the last one is stand guard at the door of your mind. Super Mario can be very addictive. Video games in general can be very addictive and they were made to be. The video game designers understand how to make them addictive because they understand uh, that you have neurochemicals in your brain, one of them called dopamine. And dopamine is the chemical of more. I want more. I'm anticipating the next thing, excitement. And um, they know how to trigger that. And they do that through different things in the game. So for example, when you hit one of the bricks and then you, know, you get a prize and you don't know what it's gonna be. Or um, you know, when you get certain re awards or rewards at the end of certain levels. So they know how to spike your dopamine levels and that can make things addictive. And the point of this is that the world is going to program you whether you're aware of it or not through video games through advertising, through social media. And so you need to stand guard at the door of your mind because if you aren't consciously programming yourself, that means that you're being programmed by everybody else. Everyone else has their own intentions. The video games, What's their objective? They want you to be hooked on the video games. That means more sales for them. That means you're gonna to continue to buy games, you're gonna to continue to play games, you're gonna to continue to share their game. That's their objective. The big corporations, they're, they want you to buy more products, buy more food, buy more candies, buy more, uh, buy more, uh, you know, whatever. Like every, every company, every corporation has their own objectives and uh, we are um, subjects to them and we are susceptible to being programmed and the same on social media if you guys haven't watched it yet I highly recommend you watch The Social Dilemma it's a movie on Netflix and it um, they have people who worked at Facebook and different social media sites the people who actually created those social platforms and they've come on and they said that we don't even want our kids to be on them because we know how these social platforms they're programming people and they do it in a way where they have an algorithm they know what you click and so what you see in front of you is different than what someone else sees you may be looking at like the same the same feed, but the things that are they're feeding you is different. So, for example, on Google, if you type in what is you know the political something political on Google, depending on what state you're in, whether it's more of a left or a right leaning state, that's going to alter what you see on Google. It's not the same for everyone. So it's just being aware of it. I'm not making it right or wrong. Of course, everyone, you know, that's it, part of uh, capitalism in many ways. And we are, you know, as business uh, owners, we are part of this all. I'm not making it right or wrong. It's just being aware of it. It's being aware of the conditioning and the priming that the world will do. And just taking an active role in that and realizing that you have the power to, to maintain, you know, to, 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 to decide what it is that you want to feed your mind. If you don't want to watch the news because it's not serving you, it's, ca it's causing more fear in your life, which is, that's their objective, right? If they're just going to play nice videos and show you the good stories around the world, are you going to be watching the news for very long? No. They want to instill fear because if you're fearful, you're going to have the, the news playing all day long for sure. So if that's not serving you in your life, turn it off. If social media, if you're finding that you're spending your time on Instagram and comparing yourself to other people and you're feeling 
more isolated. Social media is supposed to connect people, but yet you're feeling more isolated and, uh, and not feeling good about yourself. Um, turn it off. Disconnect. You don't need to be a part of it. If video games are taking up your life and you're finding yourself becoming addictive and not able to enjoy other parts of your life, if you feel like it's not serving you, you have the choice. And so just take playing an active role in your life and realizing the decisions that you make. And, uh, and, and that's all I have to share. <laughs> so just wanted to share these five things with you that I learned from playing Super Mario Bros. Um, it's been fun. If you guys play the game, let me know. I'd love to know in the comment box how many of you guys are actually playing this game and enjoying it. Um, I play with my partner um, and I'm always the princess. Uh, I'm the little pink mushroom that turns into a princess because at least then I can fly over all of the bad guys and I, I, I actually survive longer when I have the ability to fly. So I've discovered that. It's kind of like a little bit, uh, makes it easier for me to play. So what character are you? I would love to know what's your go-to character. All right, guys, thank you for watching and have a fabulous day. Bye-bye.